one. Good afternoon. This is Dr. John Bennett televising from Miami Beach, home of Neurosurgical TV studio. We have the fortune today of having Fortune uh, mm -hmm. Gangpi, a neurosurgical resident from Morocco. He's going to be uh, presenting on the subarachnoid hemorrhage. He'll tell you the exact title. Let's first uh, meet the panelists before we turn it over to Fortune. Hello, Amir. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm very glad to be here uh, and in this presentation. Thanks to everyone. Okay, welcome. Dr. Gabulo, welcome back. Thank you so much, Dr. Bennett. Hello, everyone. My name is Kapulo from Democratic Republic of Congo. I'm currently final year neurosurgeon resident at the University of Zimbabwe. Okay, welcome, Dr. Gabulo. Okay, Fortune, uh, uh, please and say a few words about yourself and then go, go into your presentation and welcome. Okay, my name is Fortune Gangwe. I'm from Benin, but I live in Morocco. Uh, I'm in the final year of my residency program on neurosurgery here. It's uh, in the uh, city of Fez. Fez is the city of uh, in the northern of Morocco. Uh, as I told, uh, around uh, four hours from Casablanca. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Um, as I told previously, it's my it's very, very pleasure that I will, I will be presenting this topic. Uh, here is the, the main building of our hospital, Centre uh, Hospitalier Université Asantu. And uh, as I, sh I took this uh, image on Google map to show you the, the city of Fez. Okay, good. Uh, disclosure, no, I have no conflict of interest to, to, to declare here. Uh, okay, this is the different part of my presentation today, uh, including the introduction, etiology, pathophysiology, clinical presentation, initial management, diagnosis, treatment, and the complication, how to diagnose, diagnose them and uh, to, to treat them. Okay, Sub, subacronym hemorrhage, I think there is a mistake here. It's, uh, it's a condition uh, with the presence of blood in the subarachnoid space between the, the arachnoid and the pia, pia mater. It could be post-traumatic or spontaneous, but a post-traumatic subarachnoid hemorrhage is not uh, my, uh, my, my topic here. I don't want to, to talk about the post-traumatic subarachnoid here but I will focus my presentation on the spontaneous subarachnoid hemorrhage. So subarachnoid, some spontaneous subarachnoid hemorrhage concern 5% uh, of stroke, but I find in, uh, in the literature an article from Burkina Faso, it's in the Western of Africa, where they, they, they find 3.3% uh, in, uh, in, in that country. Okay. Uh, the main cause of subarachnoid hemorrhage is the aneurysm. Uh, it represents uh, 75 to 80 percent of uh, subarachnoid uh, uh, hemorrhage. So the incidence, the incidence of the subarachnoid hemorrhage is uh, 10 per 100,000 popula population. And this incidence different, uh, is very, very different from and vary from countries and uh, authors. For example, in Finland and Japan, it, um, uh, uh, in Finland and Japan, the incidence is very high, up to 20 per 100,000 population. The peak age of uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage is uh, 55 to 60 years old. And, uh, Female are more concerned than male. Note that 10 to 15 percent die before reaching uh, facilities, and some author uh, consider that uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage is uh, more likely to spring uh, in the autumn, and mortality uh, is uh, very very higher, 20, uh, 30 to 50 percent. On this picture, you can see the different subarachnoid uh, space, the chiasmatic system, the interpeduncular system, and so on and so forth. So 
everybody mm -hmm. feel, oh, that's cute. What are the, the causes, the main cause of the subarachnoid hemorrhage? Okay, in, on this table, which I took from the, from the, the article of uh, McDonald and the Vivancos, you can, you can see here the different group of uh, etiology of subarachnoid hemorrhage. We have the group of vascular malformation, including cerebral aneurysm, account for 80%. Fusiform aneurysm, mycotic aneurysm, the arteriovenous malformation, the group of perimesencephalic and the idiopathic uh, 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 condition, the group of cerebral hemodynamic alteration, the group of vascular disease, including amyloid angiopathy, cervical or cranial artery dissection, uh, fibromuscular dysplasia, vasculitis, and so on and so forth. We have also the group of head trauma, the group of blood dyscrasia, the group of infection, the group of toxic causes, the group of cerebral neoplasia, including gliomas, metastasis, pituitary ap apoplexy, and uh, hemangioblastomas, and also the group of neurosurgical inter intervention. I add also here at the right side the main risk factor that we found in the, in the subarachnoid hemorrhage hypertension alcohol abuse, tobacco, drug abuse, in intensive physical exercise and diabetes are the risk factors which are modifiable. So uh, this factor is, a, an, is an individual factor, but also we have the factor we cannot uh, modify. For example, family three, the second age, the connective tissue disorder, such as polycystic kidney disorder, the heller danlos syndrome. syndrome. Okay, here I want to summarize the, the main cause of subarachnoid hemorrhage. It should be, it could be spontaneous or traumatic. And uh, uh, for the spontaneous subarachnoid hemorrhage, we have aneurysm, the non aneurysm causes, and over causes. Okay, what about the pathophysiology of subarachnoid uh, hemorrhage? The, there are two, there are two stages of pathophysiology, pathophysiology of subarachnoid hemorrhage. Subarachnoid hemorrhage inject blood into the subarachnoid space and brain injury from subarachnoid occur in two phases as I, I, I told previously. Okay, there is early brain injury that's shown by the neurological grade of the patient, which is caused by the transient global ischemia and toxic effect of subarachnoid blood. And there is a systemic response to subarachnoid hemorrhage that can affect uh, uh, the organ like uh, the lung, pulmonary edema, the heart, myocardiopathy, and the fluid and electrolyte balance. Patients with subarachnoid hemorrhage present with the sudden onset of headache, the most severe headache, headache of a patient's life. And the patient can precise the exact time when the, the symptom occurs and what, what they, were, they were doing. So uh, it's, uh, it's, it's the most severe headache and the uh, over symptom can, can occur also, so, such as nausea, vomiting, neck pain, photophobia, loss of conscience and seizure. The neurological examination can reveal the meningismus it's a nuclear rigidity with positive canine sign and Brzezinski sign, coma due to uh, hydrocephalus, increased ICP, intraparenchymal hematoma, seizure, focal cranial nerve deficit, particularly the, the third nerve with ptosis and diplopia from aneurysm uh, on the posterior communicating artery, uh, which compress the cranial, this cranial nerve. We can also find the ocular hemorrhage in the Tesson syndrome. Okay. How to manage, what's the initial management? What, what, what can call the initial management of subarachnoid hemorrhage? Okay, I want to show here what's, uh, uh, what's recommended. And, uh, and, and uh, later I will focus on what we do in our, our setting. All patients should uh, admit in the ICU in urgency. Bed rest with head of bed elevated to 20 degrees, 
uh, 30 degree, low level of light, low level of uh, heightened stimulation, reducing noses, quite dead, complete dead, vessel line. Here, it, uh, we, we can consider early aggressive fluid intravenous for patient immune step hemodynamically. Airways and breathing management, consider here also a intubation for patients who are comatose. Cardiac monitoring, maintain euvolemia, temperature, tension in the, in the nursing care. And also blood should be, we, can, uh, we, we should uh, take a blood for lab check, CBC including platelets, rotombin time, bleeding time, electrolyte, urea, creatinine, and, uh, and troponin. We should correct the, the electrolyte uh, disorders and also begin the medication, uh, uh, include uh, including analgesic, antihypertension, modine, uh, anti-epileptic drug, and anti-emetic. After that, you can perform the neurological ex uh, exam for the patient to, to reveal the, the, the symptom and the, the neurological the, the grade, such as the coma go, uh, Glasgow Coma score, uh, Scale, Meningismus, Focal de neuro Neurological Deficit, uh, Cranial Nerve Tree Palsy. And after that, all patients underwent the, all patients should, uh, should, should undergo the CT scan. In our, in our setting, all our patients underwent CT scan, and sometimes they come with the image from peripheric, another hospital or clinic outside. The, the goals of CT scan is to confirm diagnosis by showing the high, the, the high density in the subarachnoid space. It assesses complication, for example, hydrocephalus, it accounts for uh, 21%, and also the impact, the hematoma, who, ha, who can complicate the, the situation. The CT scan also can predict the location of the of the of the aneurysm, and here I, I want to show you the, in a, an example of a CT scan. Uh, here you can see the hemorrhage in the in the sylvian fissure, and also in the intermesphere inter space. Okay, when we perform the CT scan, we should grade the patient according to the fissure grading. Here is on this on this side you can see the the different uh, grades according to fissure grading. Grade one means no system blood. Grade two diffuse deposit deposition or thin vertical layer of blood. Uh, uh, grade three localized clot or vertical layer more than one millimeter thick. Grade four diffuse bleeding with or with or without intraventricular hemorrhage or parenchyma parenchymal extension. On this side, I want to show you the, the different uh, grade system we, we find in the literature. Uh, Hunt and Hess grading system, WFNS uh, grade system, and also PASH grade system. But in our, our, our hospital, we just use the WFNS grade system. So grade one of WFNS means patient just come with a headache, and the, the, the GCS or, uh, was, uh, is a uh, 15. Grade two is the patient with uh, GCS 13 or 14 without major focal deficit such as aphasia or hemiparesis or hemiplegia. Grade three, grade four, and grade five concern the poor neurologic condition for uh, poor neurologic condition patient with, grade, with, with for example, grade five, uh, patient in patient come with uh, GCS six or three with or without major def the focal deficit. Okay, but sometimes the CT scan is normal. So, uh, uh, what, what can we do to to make the diagnosis of subarachnoid hemorrhage when the CT scan is uh, is normal? The CT scan is normal, for example, when the CT scan is done uh, after. Uh, 48 or 72 hours. It concerns 5% of cases. And here, the lumbar function text uh, is very, very helpful, helpful to detect the subarachnoid hemorrhage. But the lumbar function test uh, is uh, very helpful when it is done after four hours, showing not clotting blood in CSF in second cell tube. And after centrifugation, the aspect was xanthochromic. 
this is the 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 different uh, uh, aspect of normal function when we we are checking about the the subarachnoid hemorrhage. Okay, on this slide, I want to show you the city and geogram of a patient who came in our, in our department of subarachnoid hemorrhage, uh, showing the 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 aneurysm at the terminal ICA, internal carotid artery. Okay, here I want to summarize what we do in the in in the in our department when the patient come and we suspect the subarachnoid hemorrhage. In our department, for example, our patients are young. The, the, the peak age, the, the, the mean age was 52 years old, range from 33 to 75. And, and females are more concerned in our department. Hypertension was found in 25% of uh, our, our patients. They come with sudden onset in headache in uh, 95 percent and was grade uh, WFNS grade one or two in 80 percent. All our patients underwent the CT scan in the CT angio angiogram. When we make the the the, the, the diagnosis on CT scan and the CT angiogram, we perform a, cat a catheter angiogram in 90 percent of our patients, and we decide in uh, the, the method the, the method to, to treat them endovascular or or, or or surgery the factor to make the decision depend on many 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 factors before going there i want to show you on this slide the the catheter angiogram of women who came just last week in our department it's uh, it was a 30, woman 30, 33 years old she, she was grade uh, WFNS grade one and Fisher three. And here you can see the, on the picture, the, the double aneurysm on the right, posterior communicating artery and also the anterior choroid artery. Okay. What we do in our department? Remember that when I, I, I was exposing the initial management the, about the guideline, I told that all the patients should, should, uh, should, uh, should be admitted in the, in the ICU. Okay, here, I just want to, to make a difference here. In our department, all patients was admit, were admitted on short stay, in short stay in the ICU of urgency, which we call uh, deshocage. Uh, for the condition of patient, bed resting, vessel and so on and so forth, clinical examination to find the neurological focal deficit, DSS or pupil. We perform imaging, CT scan and, and, um, and CTA. We grade the patient according to the WFNS, uh, WFNS grading system. We begin the medication, analgesic, antiemetic, modin 60 milligram every four hours. We, we, we give also uh, to patient the anti-epileptic drug, but uh, this is very controversial in literature, but we, in our department, we'll automatically give it to the, to the patient and also the, the, the nursing care. Okay, when the patient was, the patient was being WFNS one or two, our patient was admit, were admitted in the inpatient unit of neurosurgery, not in the, in the, in the ICU. When the patient, was in the poor grades, they, they, admit that, they admit that in the ICU. And also when the patient has a WFNS grade four or five, EV placement is, is a automatical place done in, uh, in this condition with uh, ICP monitoring. So it could be any different from other, other setting from other hospital or other department. Uh, this is very adapting our condition here in, uh, in phase. Okay, after that, what is the decision making process? When we, did, we, we make the, the, diagnosis, the diagnosis of subarachnoid uh, hemorrhage, uh, depending on the clinical presentation and also the presence of blood on CT, CT scan and the CT angiogram, we, the, 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 day for, the following day, we, we organized a joint meeting with the interventional neuro, neuroradiologist and 
for the decision making process for treatment option coiling or or, or surgery. Okay, I just want to I just want to invite you to to read this these five studies. Is that Finnish study, Brad Chinese study, and the two meta analyses conclude the superiority of endovascular treatment. But uh, in that studies, the the authors uh, add that pre-bleeding or non-complete occlusion are high in this uh, option. So what are the different factors of the decision making? It depends on the healthcare environment, equipment available, the skill set and experience of the neurosurgeon interventionalist, the anatomy and location of the aneurysm, the favorable dome or neck uh, ratio, more than two is very favorable for, 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 for uh, uh, coiling versus wide neck aneurysm. MC aneurysm may be difficult to coil because of the branch near the, the neck. The basilar apex uh, is uh, favorable for coiling and the uh, associate intraparenchymal hematoma, subdural hematoma, surgery allow both evacuation of hemorrhage and the uh, treatment of, of aneurysm. I want to show you here the video of uh, surgery for clipping a, okay. You can see on video through the terional, the standard terional uh, uh, approach, the cariotomy was done. And you see here the, the circular aneurysm, we dissect very carefully. You can see here the, the chiasma optic, the optic chiasma. Okay, this section will continue. Okay. We dissect the, uh, the, the branch near the neck and the, the, the neck of the aneurysm. We put here the, is a gill clip on the neck of the aneurysm. Okay, good. Okay. What's the timing of surgery or uh, endovascular methods to treat the, the, the aneurysm. The timing of the aneurysm obliteration by surgical uh, clip placement or coiling remain, uh, I think, controversial in the literature and varies according to the individual institution. But the general consensus for definitive treatment has shifted from the late surgery uh, uh, to early surgery today, in uh, many based on many many results uh, in literature. Early surgery means surgery uh, 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 performed before four days, three or four days. So this done in on this paper on this this article I show you here from Pack and colleagues and also Philip or colleague, they found that the, to, when we treat this, the patient very, very early, this decrease the in-hospital rebleeding and also the vasocytes and, uh, and the lead to better out, outcomes. I want to show you on this slide the post-operative CT scan after, after clipping in our department and also the angiogram after post -clip clipping on the uh, uh, anterior communicating artery. You can so here, you can see here that is, and also the image of the of the clip. Okay, here I want to show you the the, the coiling of the patient I I presented previously on this uh, this. Uh, I don't know. Okay, 
you remember this uh, this image it's a woman who came on our in our department last week and we we performed the 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 coiling this is a, on this on this picture it's a time it's time of a first coiling here and uh, the second one you you can see the final control showing that artery artery was the uh, uh, aneurysm was uh, was coiling maybe very well this is the ct scan post coiling to the same patient okay what about the complication there are some compl complications of subarachnoid hemorrhage the first one uh, one of them is uh, is the vasospasm it's the uh, Ike and the Remission Schneider in uh, 1951 who, who described the first, who did the first description of the vasospasm from aneurysm or subarachnoid hemorrhage. It's, um, it's a delay neurological deficit in context of subarachnoid hemorrhage, uh, such as the, the low of level consciousness the focal neuro neurological deficits, motor or speech. Uh, it's uh, the delay cerebral ischemic on CT scan. And uh, on the angiography, we found the arterial narrowing demonstrated on cerebral angiography in 50% uh, of subarachnoid hemorrhage. The time cost of vasospasm uh, is from three to two, from three to 14 days, never before three days, and very, very rarely after uh, 17 days. It concerns uh, one third of patients uh, between six and eight days. It concerns also, the factor is the initial condition, initial poor neurological condition at admission and high fissure, fissure grade. I want to show you here, the on the angiogram the image of arterial narrowing narrowing here this is from patient in our department okay how to prevent the vasospasm there is no effective prophylactic intervention for cerebral vasospasm but uh, some molecule can be used for example nimbotipine 60 milligram every four hours. Uh, the initial management of subarachnoids can, can, can it should be done, and also the exclusion of aneurysm, clipping or coiling favor the prevention of the vaso vaso spine. When it occur, uh, the vaso spine, when the vaso spine occur, we can manage it with the initial management of subarachnoid hemorrhage, exclusion of aneurysm. And uh, the triple H therapy, uh, hypervolemia, hypertension, and hemodilution. But be careful about the rebinding. Uh, when the clipping, when there is not a, when we, the, the aneurysm was not clip, clipped or, or coiling. So it's very, very difficult to manage the vasospan with, trip, with this triple H therapy when the, the, the aneurysm was not, uh, was not clipped or, or, or coiling. I want to show you on this slide, on this picture, the vasospas for the same patient we, we called last week, vasospas of the anterior A1, anterior, anterior communicating artery here on the, on the, during, the, during the, the coiling procedure. The second, the second one of the complications is the rebleeding. It is the most important cause of early death after aneurysmal subarachnoid hemorrhage. 50% of patients with rebleeding occur, with, occur within six hours from onset subarachnoid hemorrhage. The prevention is uh, uh, to, to, to prevent it is just to treat the, the aneurysm by calling or clipping. But some other uh, uh, suggest to use antifibrinolytic drugs such as a tranexamic acid, but be careful about the thromboembolic accident and seizure when using these uh, drugs. 
uh, on this table, which I took from the article from PAC in the collaborator, uh, they show that the sub when the when the patient is the article on the the, the formal on the the they build, they, they build the, 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 the paper for the research on two periods from 2008 to 2011. These patients are treated very, very early after, before the 24 hours. And the second arm of, of, of article is the group, the group B from 2001 to 2004 when the patient is uh, uh, when the patient were were treated uh, in late in late delay, so they found that the rebleeding the, the rate of rebleed of rebleeding differ from the group A to the group B. For example, in the group A, it was 1.8 percent of patients who rebleed, and in the group B, it's uh, just it's a uh, 6.5 who who rebleed. So it's very, very higher in the group B more than the group A. Another complication from of subarachnoid hemorrhage is the hydrocephalus. The acute hydrocephalus occurs in 15 to 20% of patients with aneurysmal subarachnoid hemorrhage. The pathophysiology is a very comple a complex multifactor, such as the blockage of CSF circulation or to increase resistance to CSF outflow at the arachnoid granulation. Ventricular, ventricular drainage is sometimes necessary for life-saving. EVD is associated, but EVD is associated in, in some article with rebleeding and the need of permanent change. In our setting, in our setting we put EVD for patient grade uh, WFNS grade more than more than two, and the complication of the of this procedure are the infection and rebleeding. I want to show you here on this this picture the, the an example of the hydro hydrocephal in condition of subarachnoid hemorrhage. Other complication complication includes seizure. Twenty percent of patients it was associated with rebleeding in the as I told previously, antiepileptic drugs are not recommended, but in our setting, we automatically use the, the anti-epileptic anti drug. Uh, also, another complication is the neurogenic stress cardiomyopathy, uh, the neurogenic pulmonary edema, the electrolyte disturbance, the salt vaccine syn syndrome, which uh, we should manage in the, in the patient condition. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, very good. Thank you very much, uh, Fortune. Uh, excellent presentation. Let's open it up for comments uh, from the panel. Uh, I'd like to ask a question, but let me see if Dr. Gabulo has anything to ask first. Uh, Dr. Gabulo, are you there? Yes. Go ahead, Dr. Gabulo. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Fortuné. Thank you for a great presentation. Uh, I have a few comments, then I have also questions. Okay. I'm sorry my internet is not stable today. That's why I'm not putting my video. Okay. Okay. So the first comment, uh, it's on uh, Fisher grading. Yes. The Fisher grading, the one you showed, it's an old classification. There is now a new one called modified Fisher. Yes. Modified Fisher. So the one you showed us, it was uh, the old one. So maybe you can try to see the, 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 the new one. It is called modified Fisher. Okay. Then um, I have a couple of questions. Like uh, you said, in your center, you give anti-epileptic drugs to all patients with subarachnoid hemorrhage. Yes. I want to know which one are you giving and uh, why are you giving anti-epileptic? Do you give to everyone or you only give to patients who are presenting with seizures? 
Uh, I don't know. Do you want me to ask one by one? I ask a question, you answer, or you want me to list all questions, to give you all questions, then you answer? Uh, as you want. Uh, I, I, can, I propose to, 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 to finish your question, and after you will answer. It's okay. So that's one. Then, uh, like in your center, what are the general conditions? How are you keeping the patient with the subarachnoid hemorrhage? Uh, like the general non-pharmacological treatment of uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage. And uh, the third question, do you also do DVT prophylaxis, deep vein thrombosis prophylaxis? And uh, if you do it, when do you start uh, that? Then um, the last question was, you said you put an external ventricular drain on all patients with uh, WFNS grade two. Is it all patients who present with WFNS grade, uh, greater than grade two, you put uh, EVD? What about if the patient doesn't have uh, hydrocephalus? Do you put uh, EVD or it's only patient with the WFNS grade greater than two with the hydrocephalus? So uh, then another comment, that's my member, what, what I learned from uh, Professor Vinko Dolenk. Uh, I met him two, two years ago. Uh, so he was the first neurosurgeon in the world of advocating aneurysm treatment in the acute stage. That was in 1974. Of course, it depends on centers like in your center, what you showed us. It depends also in our centers, like after the first three days, if you don't operate, then you have to wait uh, for uh, after 21 days, then you take the patient. But to him, it was like in acute phase. Once the patient present, he was operating those patients. So there's even a story he told us how he started to do that. It wasn't easy for him. His seniors were refusing, but uh, he was in court uh, stubborn and he managed to save a lot of lives that time. So yeah, so that was my uh, little contribution about the experience of Professor Vinko Dolen. So I hope I I think I asked four questions. Thank you so much, Doctor Fortune. Okay, thank you, thank you for your comment and in uh, in question. Uh, yes, uh, uh, you are right about the the the, the fissure grading I show. It's the fish. It's the the, the fissure the, the fissure grading system. Is I know that there are uh, the modifier fissure fissure grading, but okay. So thank you for the for the for the comment about that. Why we why do we give the anti-epileptic drug to the patient to our patient? Okay. We give the anti-epileptic drug to all our patients. Is is uh, uh, is the is the habit in our in our center? I can I, I can tell you exactly why we but. We can we remark that in our in our in our center, the the patients who came and don't and they don't have the, the, the seizure, when the seizure occurs, they rebleed. So that to I might be with you is very very controversial in the in the literature, but uh, in uh, our center it's a habit of it's the habit in uh, our center to to give uh, anti epileptic drug to all the patients. Who, who, who comes with the subarachnoid hemorrhage? Uh, the, the the general condition. The general condition. Yes, our patient. Our patient, as I show in the in the in my on, on my. Excuse, excuse me, doctor. Move your camera up a little bit. We can we can see the top of your head. Move your camera, please. Yeah, adjust your camera. Uh, we can't see your head. Okay, there you go. There you go. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Sorry. Okay. Um, in our center, 80% uh, of our patient was grade WFNS 1 or 2. So that's the, the condition of our patient. Uh, they come with a sudden onset of headache and uh, uh, okay, the eighty percent of them had uh, uh, WFNS grade one or, or two. So just twenty percent of all of them 
was great, great uh, more than uh, was greater was WFNS great uh, greater to greater than than two. Um, did we begin the, the deep thrombosis prophylaxis? No, in our setting, in our in our in our center, we don't give the the, the thr deep thrombosis pro prophylaxis to our patient. Never. Uh, what else? The last question is about the EVD placement. Yes, I, I, I said that for the patient who came in our, our center with uh, WFNS greater than two, we, we put the EVD placement because, and, uh, uh, because we found that all of them has a poor, uh, 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 a poor neurologic condition and to manage the ICP, it's helpful to place the the, the EVD the, the EVD for for these for these patients. So uh, it's not it's not just to to manage the hydrocephalus, but it's also to manage the to monitor it, to the monitoring of the of the ICP. Uh, what else? I think that is the that is the what these are the answer I can give to the to your question. Does that answer all your questions, Dr. Gabulo? Thank you so much, Dr. Uh, Fortune, for your answers. Um, yeah, thank you so much for your answers. Like I was saying, uh, mm. for the Fisher grading, the, the modified one, it's now the grade one, it's focal or diffuse thin subarachnoid hemorrhage with yeah. no intraventricular hemorrhage. Mm. And grade two, it's the same with grade one, but with intraventricular hemorrhage. Grade three, it's thick subarachnoid hemorrhage with uh, there's no intraventricular hemorrhage, and four uh, subarachnoid thick subarachnoid hemorrhage. Uh, when they are talking about thick, it means greater than one millimeter, like you you mentioned also. Yes. So with the intraventricular hemorrhage. Yes. Yes. So yeah, for anti-epileptic drugs, yeah, like you are saying. You also mentioned you mentioned it that it's controversial. There yeah. are other centers which don't give others. They give like you 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 give. I wanted mm -hmm. just to know which one do you do you do you give? Uh, Sorry. Uh, yeah, yes. Uh, we use. Sorry, I don't, I don't care. I don't care. No, no. I think there is uh, there is another sound there. After I, I talk, I could hear something else there. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I could hear feedback. I don't know. Can you we, hear me now? Yes, can, I, I can hear you now. Yes. The, okay. For for the for, for the antiepileptic drug, we use uh, sometimes the the uh, valproic acid. Or or Kepra, I don't remember the, the the name of the molecule, but it's a phenytoin, I think. Phenytoin, yes. Or or, or phenytoin. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because also in our center, sometimes we give phenytoin because it's uh, non-sedative anti-seizures, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, not on all patients. Like you 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 mentioned, it's controversial. Yes. We only mm -hmm. give to patients who present with seizures. Those mm. who don't present with seizures, we don't give that. Yeah. And also for DVT prophylaxis, other centers are giving. So what they say is, when you do DVT prophylaxis, you give low molecular weight heparin, it will not increase the rate of re-bleeding. But if the patient re-bleeds, it will be worse. Okay. Yeah, if the patient re bleed while you are giving your low molecular weight heparin, it will be worse. But usually, it doesn't increase the risk of re-bleeding. Oh, re so okay. other, yeah, other people prefer to, 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 to start the DVT prophylaxis after 48 hours. Others are saying after 24 hours. So it depends on the centers. You know, neurosurgery has <laughs> yeah. many schools. Uh, and also for EVD prophylaxis, others are only putting EVD when there is hydrocephalus. When there is hydrocephalus, uh, you can get um, 
subarachnoid uh, hemorrhage with no intraventricular hemorrhage, no hydrocephalus, and uh, the patient is grade 3 WFNS. Because there's no hydrocephalus, there's no subarachnoid hemorrhage, others prepared to do conservative management. Yes. So, yeah, I think, thank you so much for your answers mm. and uh, your great presentation. Yeah, you know, I'd like to make a comment for you. And I'm not a neurosurgeon, but I worked in the emergency room and we occasionally treated subarachnoid hemorrhage. And this is a while ago, 20 or 30 years ago. Uh, and we basically didn't do much. Uh, but they weren't aggressive at all back 20 years ago. That probably Dr. Gabula doesn't remember before he started. Mm -hmm. When people came in with subarachnoid bleeds, we just basically put an IV in them and put them in the corner and watched them to see what if they could recover. Of course, we do a CAT scan, but mm -hmm. there was no neuro intervention. There was no thrombolytics. So things have changed. Uh, and and the, because of the advent of the specialty of neuro interventional radiology and mm -hmm. neurosurgeons are doing coiling and clipping of aneurysms. Um, so uh, the field of subarachnoid hemorrhage treatment has certainly changed. Yeah. And it'll yeah. probably continue to, to change too, correct? Yeah, yeah. In, but, in our, in, for example, in our, in our, in our, in our center, for example, uh, the, 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 the research is continuing and we found that uh, the, uh, we, 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 we are going to the, to the endovascular uh, uh, coiling more than, more than, more, more than surgery. Uh, okay. So, yeah, Endo so. Endovascular, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, in the United States, um, of course, there's a problem of education for the patients, you know, to get to the hospital right away if there's anything going on. Uh, but they're... They need to be taken to certain centers that have the equipment. Now, do you guys go through that too, uh, of getting people and having to transfer them to a center that does coiling and endovascular? Do you have to do that too? Do you transfer patients a lot that need that? Uh, our, our center is the is the uh, um, it's, it's the, the the main hospital in the in the region. So many people come from another another hospital. Another oh, it's a region. trauma. It's a trauma center. Yes. Okay. So uh, in the in the north in the north of Morocco, we are I think that we are the the, the only one center where we can we can do the the the, the surgery of uh, the clipping and also the coiling of uh, aneurysm. So okay. many many people come from elsewhere, uh, and sometimes they come they come with the uh, arteriography, with the CT scan, CT angiography, angiogram, and so on and so forth. So yeah, it's um. Well, you know, it's the same. Uh, maybe Marco knows about this. Hello, Marco. Uh, maybe Marco knows about this in Italy too. Uh, it's okay. a question of education. How you doing, Marco? We're talking about you know educating doctors and and patients about getting to the hospital if you have stroke symptoms or or anything about subarachnoid bleed headaches, but uh, we're just talking about how sometimes the patient needs to be transferred to a center that does aggressive treatment of neuro intervention and coiling and uh, endoscopy. It's the same thing in Italy. You, you transfer patients to centers and stuff. Well, um, of course, uh, in uh, some hospital, uh, we don't have uh, uh, the uh, available uh, the endovascular treatment. So when uh, uh, came patients with uh, uh, basilar aneurysm, for example, as the, the main aneurysm uh, uh, treated by endovascular, uh, we're forced to move the patients in uh, another hospital, uh, mm -hmm. uh, half hours from here, where uh, there is the endovascular treatment available, so is a is a common thing in in Italy. Mm, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I think it's in America. The, 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 it's a question of educating the hospitals that hey, there's a center here that treats you know the acute you know subarachnoid bleeds and hemorrhages and and uh, blood clots, etc. I know in Latin America, it's a lot of education, uh, not only patients, but hospitals to let them know that if you have a case that you can be, tran they can be transferred, right Fortune? 
It's the same thing yeah. probably in Morocco is letting the hospitals know, hey, we have a stroke center here or we have endovascular. We can do acute cases. So most of the hospitals in Morocco know that uh, about your hospital? Yes, uh, uh, here we have the, the protocol, we have the protocol, the, the therapy, therapeutic protocol. So uh, when the patient had the onset of uh, uh, headache, he, 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 he under, undergo the, undergoes the, the CT scan. And on, when the CT scan, we found the subarachnoid hemorrhage, automatically the patient is, transport, is transferred to, the, to in our, our, our... Oh, okay. You don't have that protocol written, do you? So we could look no. at it? Mm -hmm. Do you have it on your laptop, the protocol? Do you have the protocol at all on your laptop? Uh, the oh, protocol? No, 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 I can't, I can't find it. Okay, uh, no problem, no problem. I just thought you might. So, uh, uh, see, any other comments or questions? Uh, and Marco, I know you came late, but uh, we're talking about sub subarachnoid uh, hemorrhage, the acute treatment. Do you have any comments on the acute treatment of subarachnoid hemorrhage, Marco? <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I'm a bit late. Uh, yeah, was that's a, okay. Whatever, whatever you have to say about it would be a positive. Um, well, actually, I don't have uh, so much thing to, to add. Uh, okay. Just I want I like to how the dilemma between uh, endovascular and uh, surgical treatment of aneurysm still remain uh, even if many studies uh, attempt to uh, to see uh, what uh, should it should be the best treatment. but this is not easy at all to uh, to define because uh, there are many factors involved uh, like the uh, the experience of the operator the uh, uh, the clinical presentation of patient is a young or old patients in this case last case uh, is preferable in vascular treatment. So it, it, there is still debate about that. Okay, uh, Fortune, uh, Marco is a neurosurgeon from uh, Como, Italy. He okay. just got back from the Mayo Clinic, as you can see from his shirt. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that again from, from a Mayo, from a so, so yeah, so uh, uh, yeah, he's been done some time there. Uh, but I was saying to Fortune. Uh, uh, yes, please, I have a, I have a question right, go ahead. To, to, to Marco. Go ahead. Uh, 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 so Marco, uh, in our in our department, uh, we 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 don't put all our patients in the ICU. For when the, the the patient is a good clinical condition, for example, WFNS grade one or two, we put the patient in the inpatient uh, uh, neurosurgery unit not in the ICU, but I know that in the literature, the, the, the literature, the, the guideline is to put all the patients in the, in the ICU, but uh, according to our condition here, we just have one uh, uh, ICU for the neurosurgery and also another, another department, uh, only uh, 18 beds, you know. So uh, it's that, that is because when the patient is grade uh, WFNS one or two, we don't put them in the ICU, but in the in the inpatient uh, uh, unit. So, what's your opinion about that, this? Uh, this uh, uh. Well, uh, I think that when you have a grade uh, one uh, of a Fisher grade, uh, um, well, um, you can accept in patients clinic, but you uh, have a, a, always a risk because. Okay. Uh, the aneurysm can uh, evolve, you can have uh, a, a, a new bleeding, so the patient can worse. Mm -hmm. I think that if in inpatient clinic, you have a monitoring yeah. that check the pressure, you know that the, the, the worst, uh, uh, the, the worst spect that can uh, um, condition a new bleeding is the uh, hypertension. So mm -hmm. if you have a monitoring that check the, the, the pressure of patients, a good nursing that check the patients every moment to see if there is some uh, worsening. You can put the patients with a, a Fisher grade one in inpatients. If it's over, so you have a bleeding in the ventricle, of course you can uh, uh, you cannot afford the patients came in inpatients, but moving into the care unit. I know that some in some hospital there is also a logistic problem. If yeah. you have just one bad place in intensive care unit, of course you can uh, you can uh, do more uh, 
uh, you cannot you can you cannot create a new uh, bed place in the care unit so you need to face this problem yeah. of course yeah. but uh, usually if you have a good monitoring of a, 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 pre, a, a pressure blood pressure in the patient and the patient uh, is a is a good state uh, fissure grade one uh, you can uh, put in in patients okay thank you you're welcome okay very good okay i'd like to thank you very much fortune uh, for, for giving a lecture and you're welcome to give as many as you want you're uh, and i thank everybody for coming and uh, i'll send you a recording of this uh, after editing okay so i'd like to say goodbye to everybody stick around guys we'll we'll chat thank you thank you goodbye. <laughs> I'm sorry, I gotta stop this here. I'm gonna stop.